one. So I'm um, trying this recording uh, a little bit different way because I'm using students' work. So for this particular activity, students are earning quiz credit for showing all of the work given the correct answers. So I had students copy down the problem from the quiz that they took online originally, and they are basically earning points by showing the work and doing it correctly um, on paper rather than through a multiple choice quiz online. So given uh, another opportunity to learn, trying to give this a shot. Uh, here's problem number one. A uh, train can travel 336 kilometers in eight hours, which of the following is a unit rate? Of course, a multiple choice question. They had multiple options. We knew the correct answer is 42. Um, first thing to do would be to write the table, enter in the information given out of the problem. So that would be um, traveling 336 kilometers. We have a table labeled with kilometers and hours, 336 under kilometers, eight under number of hours. And then we got to decide what we're being asked, which of the following is a unit rate. So um, what was missed by this student is that uh, there was additional text here that said kilometers per one hour. So we go ahead and put one in the hour column here. And then we just got to figure out what factor do we multiply or divide by to get from eight to one. So we can divide by eight or multiply by one eighth. Either way, it's the same thing. And we'll get from eight to one, which means we do the same thing on this side and discover that the train is traveling at 42 mile, uh, kilometers, excuse me, for every one hour. That is problem number one. Problem number two, Marie saved $51 on Wednesday. She spent eight of her savings. What ratio represents the portion of her total savings compared to what she has left? The key here is that we have to calculate what she has left. So here we're gonna write out the equation as a sentence, kind of an equation sentence, savings left equals total amount of savings minus what she spent. We replace the variables we know. Uh, 51 was the total number of dollars she saved. Eight was the dollars she spent. 51 minus eight is 43. Then we got to ask, what are we asked to do? We need to create a ratio that represents total savings compared to what she has left. So we create a ratio of total two savings left. Then we just enter in the data. Underneath, 51. To the right, 43. We look for any kind of common factor that we can reduce this by, and we can't, so it just stays there, and that is our answer. Number three, Jake sold 42 tickets to the school fair, and Jeannie sold nine tickets. So those are going to be our data points here. Jake selling 42, Jeannie selling nine. What is the ratio in simplest form? I asked students to circle this. Obviously, they couldn't do that online, but this would be something that they would note in their handwritten work on a scratch piece of paper. That simplest form is what's being asked for. That means we may have an extra step. Simplest form of the number of tickets Jeannie sold to the number of tickets Jake sold. Uh, we're learning in class that order matters, so we write Jeannie first. Ratio, so we have our colon here to Jake. We have Jake here on the right. Then we go back in and hunt for the data. Jake sold 42 tickets, so we put 42 underneath Jake. Jeannie sold nine tickets, so we put nine underneath Jeannie. We have a ratio of nine to 42. We'd look for any common factors because this is this uh, reducing by any common factor is going to give us the simplest form. So here we find that 42 is divisible by three, as is nine. 9 divided by 3 is 3, 42 divided by 3 is 14. In simplest form, the ratio of Genie to Jake is 3 to 14. For every three tickets Genie sells, Jake sells 14. That's number three. Number four, Jonah needs to purchase 30 juice packs for his class. While shopping, Jonah discovers the following prices for comparable juice packs, which offers the best unit price. Here, it looks like this student only did one of the four options, which is, which is fine. Look on the quiz. What we need to do is reduce every one of the four options to a common, uh, a common comparison. And in this case, when you look at the options, they're all multiples of five. So if we reduce all of the different uh, answer options to instead of 15 packs for 395, uh, we divide by three in this case, we get five packs for $1.31. If we do that for all of the different options, we will find out that 
the answer B is the correct answer. So for this student, I kind of jumped the gun a little bit, giving them full credit here. They should have done this process of reducing all of the ratios to a common uh, factor of five to, in order to, to compare them uh, and find out which one was the cheapest. They could have simply in this case divided both by 15 and gotten the unit price, the price per pack, that would have also yielded the, the same correct answer. That's number five. Whoops, wrong direction. I'm sorry, that was number four. Here's number five. I'm trying to make this quick so it doesn't take too, too long, but also without skipping over important details. Number five, a car travels 136 miles using seven gallons of gas. At that rate, this means that we're talking about a proportion. How far can the car travel using 42 gallons of gas? Again, we're going to set up a table. We could have set up a ratio for this, but we're realizing that there's only a slight difference between the two. And we are measuring miles and gallons of gas. In the problem, we're given 136 miles. Here, it's underneath miles. Using seven gallons of gas, seven is underneath gallons of gas. And then we have to look for what we're being asked for. In this case, we're asked how far. So this is the number that's in question. Can we go using 42 gallons of gas? So we put 42 in the gallons of gas column. And then we ask ourselves, how do we get from seven to 42? Again, using multiplication or division. In this case, it's multiplication uh, of six. So seven times six gives us 42. Therefore, we take the miles times six and we get 816. This, is, this will be the correct answer with all work shown. Number six, a 6% 6 sales tax is charged to the purchase. So in this case, we're not really using ratios. Here, students are given three different, four different possible equations. At this point, they just need to test it out. So if a student identifies what they believe to be uh, the right answer, let's say A, B, C, or D, what I'm encouraging them to do is on a scratch piece of paper, take that answer and actually work it out. So in this case, the equation was uh, 1.06 times $1.50 will equal a final cost of $1.59, and that is a 6% sales tax uh, charge. And what I asked the students to do is just actually do the math. See if 1.06 times $1.50 gets you $1.59. Then they got to ask themselves, okay, does this really represent 100, which is 1, and 6% of the original cost? And it does. This is 100%, which is one whole number, and 0 0.06, which is 6%. That will give us the total cost after a 6% increase. Showing the work of just actually multiplying the two numbers out would be great for number six. Number seven, find the missing value in the proportion. They were given the proportion 21 equals uh, 21 over an unknown number equals nine over 15. Here, what this student did is she said, okay, if I need to know what I need to multiply to go this direction, I just have to divide the other direction. So she took 21 divided by nine. Um, we found out, she found out in her calculator that that was approximately 2.3. Now it's really two and a third but in the calculator, it's gonna be 0.3 repeating. So what she did is she used this factor times 15, going the opposite direction. She used division to go this direction. So to go the opposite direction, she's using multiplication. And she did 15 times 2.3, which is again the estimate, and that equals 34.5. Um, this was an estimate. She found out that this is really close to one of the answers, which was 35. And if she had been more precise and used the fraction, she would have gotten exactly 35. Another strategy would be to see that three is a factor of each of these. So if this is reduced um, by three, we would get three over five. And at that point, then we would take the ratio of three over five and figure out how do we get to 21 over the unknown number. And that would be to multiply by seven. So we would take the new fraction, which would have a three here, times seven, that would get us to 21. The new denominator of the ratio, the fraction style ratio over here would be five. Five times seven would give us 35. Either way, we're gonna come up with the correct answer. Number eight, <clears throat> pretty straightforward. Find a ratio equivalent to six to seven. So we write out six to seven. We find the equivalent ratio that we believe is the correct answer. We write it underneath. 
we show that it is the same factor to get to the second ratio for both sides. Six times two is 12, seven times two is 14. That describes a proportionate relationship. That's all the work we need to see for number eight. Number nine, the equation below represents marking up the price of a TV, $500, by 35%. Find the missing value F. So this is asking them, what do I multiply 500 by to get the answer 675? Here, the students would hopefully recognize that this decimal represents 135% of the original cost. Now, they prove that by actually showing the multiplication, or in this case, the student um, created basically a ratio and divided, and she found some proof here. This is enough evidence that this is the correct answer. Um, if a student substituted this in for the missing value F, showed the multiplication and got 675 as an answer, that would also be enough evidence to show that this answer is correct. 1.35 represents 135% uh, percent of the original number. Finally, we have the last, last question. And let me see if I can rotate this. Yes. Okay, so here we are asked to write three ratios that are equivalent to 428. And the three different answers were 1 7th, 2 14th, and then 3 uh, 21st. So what the students showed is that if we take 4 28ths and divide by 4 for both the numerator and denominator, we get 1 7th. If we take 4 uh Oh, if we take 4 28ths and 2 14ths, which is the other uh, answer, we divide both of those by 2. So for this problem, there's a set of answers, three ratios equivalent. There's a set of answers, and the set of answers is 1 7th, 2 14ths, and 3 21 This student is showing how 4 28ths can be um, reduced to each of those different ratios. So that means they're equivalent. So here, 4 28ths divided by 4, we get 1 7th. 4 28ths divided by 2 for the numerator and denominator, we get 2 14ths. And for the last one, um, we divide by 0.3, or actually it's not 0.3. We're not dividing by 0.3. We're multiplying by 3 fourths, so dividing by 4 thirds. Anyway, I'd like to see a different factor here. Uh, to show that 4 24ths can reduce to uh, 3 24ths. Um, so the work shown for this particular one isn't quite correct. I'm trying, again, something new, showing students' work. Um, but the student would most likely, in this case, reduce by 4 first to get to 1 7th, and then increase 1 7th to 3 21ths by multiplying by 3. So this one would be a two-step proof. Uh, for that final ratio of 3 21sts. Um, but if your student shows work similar to this, that's fantastic. Uh, they will earn 20 out of 20 points on basically the quiz redo. Uh, thank you very much for the time. I hope you found the video helpful.